Singapore, the glittering economic jewel in the heart of Southeast Asia. But this country imports almost everything it needs to function. And a booming population is turning the island into a dense concrete jungle. Singapore has limited land space. Applying large scale of wind farm or solar farm is difficult. Ingenious solutions are needed to meet the exploding demand for resources and maintain a healthy environment for its citizens. Will these solutions secure a more sustainable future for this boomtown? Asia is booming, its population nearly quadrupled within a century. These boom towns are fueled by more than human or natural resources. Radical innovations are making them livable and sustainable. But the challenge of achieving these innovations can be tough. And the answers are never straightforward. The future city of Asianopolis could produce more energy than it consumes, supporting all of its needs on just renewable energy. Like this transoceanic rail tunnel, a high-speed rail system powered entirely by waves. Compact wave energy converters capture the tiniest of wave movements, transforming their energies into electricity and powering the entire rail system. Such an extensive use of wave energy could be possible due to innovations of the 21st century, when the world was on the verge of an energy crisis. The Earth's supply of fossil fuel is almost depleted, and Singapore is in a race against time to find alternatives. Going renewable is the best solution, but for Singapore, this is easier said than done. There are many forms of renewable energy available in the market, such as wind and solar. However, Singapore has limited land space. Applying large-scale farm is difficult. Henry is a naval architect by trade. Most of his life was spent dealing with the sea. And it was in the sea that Henry saw Singapore's answer to its energy crisis, wave energy. Singapore has 600 square kilometer sea space where we can harvest the wave energy to become our alternative source of electricity. But there's one problem. Singapore is not known for having powerful waves. Typically, to harness wave energy, devices called wave energy converters are used to generate electricity. However, existing devices are meant for larger waves they have low efficiency, able to convert only a quarter of a wave's energy into electricity. Many other technology are not suitable for such wave, but this is reasonable energy source we can harvest. Henry believed if he designed a more efficient converter, Singapore's waves could become a viable source of power. Many people think this is mission impossible, but I always attracted to challenges. When people say impossible, I always stand up and say, yes, I want to try. I have no fear of failure. In 2008, Henry set out on his mission. It took him almost five years of research before the fruits of his labors were finally realized. Let me introduce you my invention, Jaku, the Dragon King of Ocean. We should have buy a champagne. At just three meters wide, Henry's compact Dracu has a conversion rate of 55%, almost double the efficiency of any other wave converter. Key to this high efficiency is Henry's unique design feature, one-way valves. This is scale model of Dracu. As you can see here, the water level is moving up and down, up and down. This irregular motion of waves makes it difficult to generate power consistently, resulting in low efficiency. Henry's one-way valves can overcome this irregular motion, 
by streamlining waves into a single directional flow of water. The upper valve only lets water in, while the lower valve only lets water out. As a result, regardless of the wave's height, water is forced to always flow downwards, spinning the hydro turbine in one direction and generating a smooth output of power from the electromagnetic generator above. The Dracu's design also overcomes another problem, bounce back. In the ocean, waves, when they hit a rigid structure like this, usually it will bounce back. Waves, when reflected, can disrupt the energetic forces of incoming waves, resulting in a loss of energy. But with Henry's valves, waves can flow through freely and preserve their natural motion. All right, perfect. You can see the wave height reduced nearly 50% with the Dracu. The energy is absorbed. With the valves, the Dracu becomes ultra-efficient, able to maximize every ounce of wave energy. Henry's Dracu is so efficient, it can work in small wave conditions like Singapore's. My Dracu is able to work in very low, very small wave sea, such as 0.2 meter wave, the machine will kick in, start to work. In Singapore's seas, one Dracu unit can generate enough power to sustain one household. 24-7. Here we go. In larger waves, the Dracu has the capacity to generate four times that amount of power. But for Henry, operational efficiency also has to be matched with cost efficiency. My dream is to provide another energy source for Singapore, but also we want to provide an affordable renewable energy source. While durable enough to withstand extreme wave conditions, the Dracu is made with a simple material, just plain steel. On top of this, the Dracus are also fuss-free. Their simple modular design allows for quick installation and easy maintenance. With the Dracu, Henry might just have unlocked Singapore's waves as a potential source of energy. An array of Jaco, say 25 units of our current Jaco B product, can power 75 households in Singapore. No problem. With wave energy, vertical farming, and green urban planning, Singapore is striving for a sustainable future. Finding new ways to produce food and energy and maintain green spaces for a high quality of life for its citizens. This boomtown is set to meet the future demands of its expanding population and soar into even greater heights.